So, we are here with the second part of the digestive system in relation to yoga practice. So friends, don't forget to watch the first part where we have covered the mechanical digestion that is done by the mouth and stomach, while the chemical digestion done by saliva and gastric juices. In the second part, we will cover the accessory organs that help the stomach and small intestine to digest the food, such as liver, pancreas, gallbladder. Friends, we all have accessory organs that helps the stomach and small intestine to digest the food. Let's know about them and also how can the yogic asanas help our accessory organs to function better, especially in cases of diabetes. So let us talk about the accessory organs. Food that is chewed in the oral cavity, then swallowed, ends up in the stomach, where it is further digested so its nutrients can be absorbed in the small intestine. The salivary glands, liver, gallbladder, and the pancreas aids the process of ingestion, digestion, and absorption. These accessory organs of digestion play key roles in the digestive process. Each of these organs either secretes or stores substances that pass through ducts into the alimentary canal. Now, let us talk about the liver. The liver is one of the largest organs in the body and it is continuously producing bile. This yellowish brown fluid aids chemical digestion by emulsifying fats into the duodenum. The liver has many functions, but two of its main functions with the digestive system are to make and secrete bile and to cleanse and purify the blood coming from the small intestine, containing the nutrients just absorbed. There are certain yogic exercises that can enhance the health of your liver and Swami Ramdev suggests how can we include them in our daily lives and stay strong in fighting against coronavirus. Swami Ramdev suggests pranayam including Kapal Bhati, Anlom Vilom and others to treat the fatty liver. Now what is fatty liver? Fatty liver happens when fat builds up in the liver. Having small amounts of fat in your liver is normal but too much can become a health problem. This is mostly because of too much of alcohol. Now, the gallbladder. What is the gallbladder? It stores the bile. Now, bile is made in the liver. If bile is not immediately needed for digestion, it flows up to the cystic duct to the gallbladder. The gallbladder is a green pear-shaped sac about 10 centimeters or 4 inch long that stores and concentrates excess bile secreted by the liver. Bile is released by the gallbladder as needed into the small intestines. During a meal, the gallbladder contracts sending bile to the small intestine. Now, let us talk about the pancreas. The pancreas is an organ located behind the lower part of the stomach, in front of the spine, and plays an important part in diabetes. And as yoga teachers, we need to know about this organ. The pancreas is the organ which produces insulin, one of the main hormones that helps to regulate blood glucose levels. Pancreatic juice breaks down protein, fats and carbohydrates. Among other functions, the oblong pancreas secretes enzymes into the small intestine. These enzymes break down protein, fat, carbohydrates from the food we eat. 
the pancreas secrete pancreatic juice a mix of digestive enzymes water buffer and electrocytes pancreatic juice drains to the main pancreatic duct into the common bile duct and then into the small intestine there it buffers stomach acids and break down protein fats and carbohydrates if you wish to activate your pancreas yogic asanas such as gomukhasan paschimottanasan halasan ardhamatsendriyasan mayurasan and bakasan definitely but these are advanced poses so just be careful while doing it as it requires more upper body strength believe that an organ so narrow could do such a big job however looks can be deceiving the absorptive surface area of the small intestine is actually about 250 square meters 2700 square feet the size of a tennis court the small intestine is an organ where most of the absorption of nutrients from food takes place it lies between the stomach and the large intestine and receives bile and pancreatic juices to the pancreatic duct to aid in digestion the small intestine is about 20 feet roughly 6 meters long and folds many times to fit into the abdomen although it is longer than the large intestine it is called the small intestine because it's narrower in width now the small intestine has three distinct regions the duodenum the jejunum and the ileum now the duodenum is the shortest is where preparation for absorption through small finger like protrusions con willy begins the jejunum is specialized for the absorption through its lining by enterocytes small nutrient particles which have been previously digested by enzymes in the duodenum the main function of the ileum is to absorb vitamin b12 bile salts and whatever products of digestion they were not absorbed by the duodenum now the chyme passes from the small intestine through the ileocecal uh, valve and into the sesum of the large intestine now let us try to understand the job done by the large intestine so the large intestine is the portion of the digestive system most responsible for absorption of water from the indigestible portion of food the long tube like organ that is connected to the small intestine at one end and the anus at the other your large intestine is about 5 feet or roughly 1.5 meters long the large intestine is much broader than the small intestine and takes a much straighter path through your belly or abdomen the purpose of the large intestine is to absorb water and salts from the material that has not been digested as food and get rid of any waste products left over by the time food mixed with digestive juices reaches your large intestine most digestion and absorption has already taken place what's left is mainly the fiber the plant matter which takes a long time to digest dead cells shed from the lining of your intestines salt bile pigments which give this digested matter its color and water in the large intestine bacteria feed on this mixture these helpful bacteria produce valuable vitamins and absorbed into your blood 
and they also help digest fiber. The large intestine is made up of the following parts. Sesum. The first section of your large intestine looks like a pouch, about two inches long. It takes in the digestive liquid from the ileum and passes it onto the colon. Let's talk about the colon. Now the colon, this is a major section of the large intestine. The colon is also the principal place for water reabsorption and absorbs salts when needed. The colon consists of four parts. Ascending colon, using muscles contraction, this part of the colon pushes any undigested debris under the sesum to a location just under the right lower end of the liver and especially when you do Ardha Pavan Muktasan, that is the right knee to the chest, you give a massage to the ascending colon. And then when you take your left knee to the chest, you massage your descending colon. This helps you in the digestive process. Now let's talk about the transverse colon. Food moves through this second portion of the colon across your front. Abdominal wall traveling from left to right just under your stomach. Descending colon. The third portion of the colon pushes its content from just near the spleen down to the lower side of your abdomen. Sigmoid colon. The final S-shaped length of the colon curves inward among the coils of your small intestines then empties into the rectum. Now, the rectum. The body gets rid of waste products from digestion through the rectum and anus. This process, called defecation, involves contraction of rectal muscles, relaxation of the internal anal sphincters, and an initial contraction of the skeletal muscle of the external anal splinters. The defecation reflex is mostly involuntarily under the command of the autonomic nervous system. But the somatic nervous system also plays a role to control the timing of elimination. This final section of digestive tract measures from 1 to 1.6 inches or roughly uh, 2.5 to uh, 4 centimeters. Leftover waste collects there, expanding the rectum until you go to the bathroom. At that time, it is ready to be emptied through your anus. In fact, one of the six cleaning methods or shat karmas in Hatha Yoga is Basti. Now what is Basti? Basti is a yogic viewpoint to clean the rectum region. In Kevaledham, we used to practice Bastri. Traditionally, Basti, the yogic anima technique, was used by yogis. Basti is aimed at cleaning the lower intestines and the colon, removing toxins and cooling the body. Performing Basti is not easy. It requires a lot of physical strength along with proper practice and training of Nauli Kriya. In the modern world, it's known as anima. So here we are, we finally complete the digestive system in relation to the yogic practices. So, see you soon. Take care. Keep smiling. Namaste.